Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling. Our exploration of the sport continues. Nike Hot Seat special guest today, the founder of the Wrestlers and Business Network, John Licata. Nobody's worked any harder to promote this sport than John and his team across the country of Wrestlers and Business Network members. He joins us now from his offices. John, how are you? God, it's a beautiful day in Virginia. It's going to be uh, 78 degrees today. Wow, there's a sudden departure from reality, and everybody will get checked into the weather here in central Iowa today. We're expecting uh, big, big storms late today. Well, if you want to fly in or soon enough, we'll take you out on the boat. That's what I'm talking about. You, me, Mike Moyer, and a fishing pole. We'll just have a good time. Mike, Let's talk Mike, good bait. Mike, we'll use Mike for bait. I want to congratulate you and your team. Uh, the local organizing committee, everybody in Atlanta, Georgia, McCamish was terrific. Uh, the people in Atlantic were excellent. The 50th edition of the NWCA All-Star Classic uh, just looks so tremendous on television, John, and in person even better. Congratulations on a, a masterful event. Thanks, Scott. You know, uh, it doesn't happen with a great deal of cooperation from, you know, the community. You know, it, it's... Uh, and. And those Atlanta guys, you know, Rob Laramore, I, I can't say enough about, Buddy Blaha, Max Dean, uh, Bud Hannibal, and, and all the, the Georgia board members, the Atlanta board members, just did a fantastic job. They, they, they did everything they everything in, they, in their control they took care of. They were unbelievable. And uh, several things were accomplished this year. First of all, you solidified your relationship with the NCAA and its design of of uh, trying new things, trying different things on, in, a, in a situation where you have high-level wrestlers and uh, some proposed new rules. Uh, can you talk about this being a platform for that without you guys, the wrestlers in business in particular, seeking to change the sport? Well, last year was the first year that the NCAA approached us about doing the experimental rules, some of the test rules. And, you know, we, we had... You know, uh, we felt good that that there was some relevance and cooperation that they would come to us and, and ask us to do this. So, so that was really it. Was, it felt good. You know, it felt it felt good. Um, this year, the you know, w they rolled out the new rules that are in place. Plus, they had the three point takedown, which um, which basically showed that, uh, man, you're, you're in this match. You know, you could be up six. You could be winning six nothing. And if your opponent gets it right, they could be right back in it or even take the lead. Yeah, I, th I thought I think it was exciting. Um, uh, of course, the fans and uh, you know the future will tell on that. But you know it, it is a bit of an adjustment for the wrestlers. That's the first time they're really seeing it in live competition at a very high level. Is you know at the very least you know these matches are you know NCAA semifinal level. And in some cases, NCAA final level matches. Yeah, you know, absolutely. absolutely. That's one of the things I got out of it is that the the wrestling was absolutely stellar. Uh, it was tight in many cases, uh, very competitive. Uh, we saw some. Um, I mean, if you're going to if if you're going to enter the season, do it in do it in the right way. And you guys did that. Now, the reason I bring this up. Um, there are some out there that are saying, what are the true goals and intentions of wrestlers and business network? And, uh, you know, while I can answer that, I think perhaps from you, uh, <clears throat> you know, you can give us the, the, the whole family's uh, perspective on what wrestlers and business network is all about. Well, well, f first off, I mean, the, the boilerplate answer, you know, really reflects on our mission and our mission is to engage the professional community with ties to wrestling, all right? To engage it, to bring those the, the, those people into our sport who, who aren't in our sport, who left our sport. And, and, it's, and it's really about commerce. It's about supporting them professionally, hiring, doing business with each other, and, and engaging uh, and mentoring, you know, the, the, the younger community that will become uh, those higher level professionals. We're not trying to boil the ocean. We're not trying to change the sport. We're, we're not. You know, uh, obviously, when we're successful on, in some things, it does reflect well and, 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 goes back, and it does go back to the sport. But that's not the purpose of our mission. You know, I, like, I, I tell people that we're sort of a combination of, of the Rotary Club, uh, the advisory board, 
in, in business networking international. It's, it's, we're not trying to bring in 3 million people. That'd be nice. You know, if we bring in 100,000 professionals for, for th that, that follow our mission, I think we're doing a great job. And I think the byproduct will help our sport. So really not even I follow the mission, but that you want them to, guys that are like-minded in business, wanting to have uh, good business relationships with others in business, and perhaps I need a plumber, I need an attorney, I need an airline pilot, or whatever I need, uh, and they need maybe they need my services um, to do business with each other. I think that's a very respectful goal. Scott, if you need a, if you, if you need a roofer, I mean, there's a roofer, no doubt, within ties to wrestling in the Des Moines area. And, you know, we want them to provide value. We want them to do good work. You got to, you know, obviously. But if you can give a wrestler a chance, if you if you need a realtor, call a realtor that's a wrestler. If you need a vehicle, call it, call a wrestler that, you know, is, is in the automobile business. And then to that person that you've just engaged and, 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 has, and has profited from it, they need to give back to the sport in some way. They need to make a monetary return back to the sport. We don't tell you what that is, but it's to do it. A few you weeks know? ago, we had terrible storms here in Iowa. It's funny you should bring that up. And uh, water came in my house, something terrible. I, I made a few phone calls throughout the Wrestlers and Business Network, found Jeff Bacaris. He and his brothers wrestled in Bettendorf. They own a big roofing company called Bacaris Roofing. I, it came over. Because I'm a, uh, a member and because we're, we're friendly through the sport, I got a great price. I got a great job done, quick and efficient. I hired a wrestling roofer. How about that? That first example you gave was uh, a real positive experience for me. So I endorse that idea. John, there are, there are those out there that wonder, should the Wrestlers and Business Network be in the promotion business? Well, well we are, aren't we? I mean, we, we are. It's... It, it provides our network in a good light. It gives us a platform, a real positive platform, because we're doing well. People are become aware of us. Now, in terms of the true purpose of wrestlers in business as it aligns to the NWC All-Star Classic, well, we're not here to market our sport. Although we, uh, although we will do, do what we can on a positive, uh, positively to promote it, our goal for the Classic is to promote, to promote a positive experience for the student athletes and hopefully drive a connection that this sport stays with them throughout their life. We provide a giving experience, a giving experience that we hope they, they will be touched by. Pay it forward in the future when it's their turn. And taking the best of, of our values that we learn through wrestling and showcasing leverages this for the good. It, re it really does. Now, we also want it to re reflect well on our sponsors, because there's no doubt, Scott, without the 145 or 50 or so thousand dollars that we raised for the Classic this year, we can't do what we did. We can't pay to get ESPN on. We can't treat those kids like athletes, like the superstars, the all-stars that they are. And, you know, it takes money to do that. And that money comes from the from the professional community, the business community, from us. You bet. That we feel good about in, uh, to, for our sport. You know, it's it's our way of, of paying back. Of course, you know, it reflects well on wrestlers and business. But when you have a great signature event, and, and, I, and I think the classic, the NWCA classic, is beautifully positioned to create storylines, uh, that, that to sort of kick off the preseason and set it up. I mean, if, if you think, you know, David Taylor, Kyle Dake, our first year, you know, that was a perfect example of that. That created excitement that carried through the whole season. You know, two years ago, we had Steber and Maple, two Division One champs, you know, going out of weight class. That set the tone for the season. And, uh, you know, again, that that's not our, our, our stated mission but when you bring good people around something, good things will happen. I, I, th I, think, I, I think that's you know, important for everyone to realize, right. that we're bringing good people who, who wouldn't normally be there. Our guest uh, is uh, a tremendous advocate of the sport, 
uh, does a very good job in business. And gosh, why can't we do the two together? And we are. It's, it's through the Wrestlers and Business Network. You can look for them online at wrestlersandbusiness.org. And there are chapters from around the country. Uh, and they all would like to see uh, this All Star Classic come to their city, their town. Next year, it heads to Cleveland, Ohio. And why Cleveland, Ohio? Well, first of all, you know, the roots of wrestlers and the, the roots of wrestlers and business network are started with the Cleveland guys, wrestlers and business. And of course, the D.C. guys, Greater Washington Wrestlers Business Wrestling Business Network. D.C. has had its chance for a couple of years and hopefully we'll get it back in D.C. at some point. I know we'd like to have it. But, you know, now it's an opportunity for Cleveland. And let me tell you, the Atlantic, the Philadelphia guys did better than the D.C. guys. The, the, Cle- the, the Atlanta guys did be- a little better than the Philly guys. Now it's up to Cleveland to do the same thing. They, they need to bring it up a notch. Hmm. They need to bring their A-plus game, and they will. You know, what's really funny about this is a year ago when we first reached out to Cleveland State about, you, about putting it in the, on their campus, in their arena, they shut us down. Now, a year later, after, we've, after Wrestlers in Business has engaged that, that Cleveland State wrestling program, we're now on their campus. I mean, that's a byproduct of Wrestlers in Business. That's a good thing. Again, we're not trying to do that. That's not our main purpose, but it happens that when it happens. When their athletic director came to our event after the, the stress of, of initially canceling the program, that... That, that fellow, it took a lot of integrity, took a lot of chutzpah for him to, to come and do that. Now he's a fan of ours, and we're supporting them in a big way. I see. That's what wrestlers in business can do if we have the right leader in town, we have the right board, and we have a chapter in town. ESPN reported a two-point uh, rating. In other words, uh, uh, the viewership, they were pleased with it. Uh, and then, of course, that was the live on a Sunday night, uh, pressured by an awful lot of other things going on on television as far as offerings go. But um, you couldn't ask for a, a better first-run result. How does that compare to other things, as you know? Well, <coughs> excuse me. Thanks thanks for asking. Um, actually, ESPN came back to us uh, early this week, and they equated it with the, the first year – the Thursday of the first event they ever did at the NCAA tournament, that Thursday session. That Thursday session, several years ago, they got a 3.0. We did a 2.0, certainly a, a little certainly a little bit less. But if you really take in consideration, if you take into account that, you know, some of our top teams, our top drawing teams, our top attendance team didn't participate this year for, for whatever the reason, a variety of reasons, you know, just think if we had those teams here in, in terms of ESPN, how what they said to us was, hey, if we had those teams, we probably would have equated it to the first day of the NCAA tournament that first year. So they were very pleased. I didn't know what to expect. We didn't know what to expect. Uh, it, but I'll tell you what, when I heard when I when I heard those comments, I really felt good about what we did because it was an effort. I mean, it changed the whole dynamic of the classic. Our clinic had to start earlier, and it and adversely affected our clinic. You know, we moved it from a Saturday to a Sunday. We're competing with, you know, in, an, in, a, in a football, uh, an NFL town. I mean, it, 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 it did create a ripple effect, but I think relative to ESPN and live television, you know, it had a positive effect. And that doesn't happen without us. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not bashful to say a lot of people talk about putting things on TV, we did it. We did it. Our Atlanta group and wrestlers and business did it. And the only other time it goes really live on a major network, uh, ESPN, is at the NCAA tournament. We did it, Scott. Absolutely. And uh, what, a, what a job you guys did. Uh, congratulations on the success of the event. Congratulations to the young people that were able to compete at the event that could say throughout their entire career they you know, we're able to compete at the All-Star Classic. The 50th edition was a neat celebration, too, as you brought in so many of the uh, past stars and past All-Star participants, yep. uh, including uh, Boog Powell was there, one of the great pitchers from uh, baseball legend, 
who started his career in 62, pitched all the way through 77. I mean, that's a career, but he was there. There's so many great stars there. We, when, when the idea came up about bringing, you know, inviting the, uh, the legends back, you know, honestly, I didn't buy into it. Uh, I, you know, I, we did it, but I, I didn't think it would work. Um, it did. It was, you know, we tried a number of things this year. Some of them worked, some of them different. Didn't. I mean, that's part of the deal. That's part of, you know, engaging professionals, getting different ideas and, you know, that type of excitement. But it was it was beautiful. In fact, a number of and I talked to a number of them, a number of those legends said they don't even go to the NCAA tournament. What a great idea. So every year we will invite them back. Maybe every five years we'll make a big deal out of it. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they're welcome back every year and we'll do whatever we can to make sure they can come back. John, special thank you to you, uh, the extensive membership that is the Wrestlers and Business Network. Look for them online at do, uh, .org, wrestlersandbusiness.org. Again, congratulations to all the young people that wrestled, the coaches who represented well, dressed for the part. Uh, I love it when our coaches dress up and represent our sport, man. It was classy. Uh, the facility was tremendous. The hotels, everybody that took care of us, uh, you know, from Sandy Stevens, myself, uh, Tim Johnson, uh, Jim Gibbons. We sat and did our own post after after event dinner, and uh, uh, we 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 had a hard time finding anything we were unhappy with. It was just so great. So, well, kudos to you guys. I mean, you've been part of this since day one. I mean, you really you really have. It's great having Sandy there. I think anything we try to do, we you know, we really aspire to do it first rate and first class. And, uh, you know, I, I can't uh, say enough about Rob Laramore and the Atlanta guys and, and what they accomplished. And you know what, Scott? Those Cleveland guys, they will exceed expectations next year. I promise you. Uh, they'll give us an opportunity to see if Cleveland truly does indeed rock. We'll find that out next year. The date, of course, has been set. John, tell us the date. It's, it's November 5th. It's a Saturday. It's at the Wolstein Center on the campus of Cleveland State. I hope Aaron Grossman is listening. You know, he, I'm sure he's working on it in, in, his, in his, his Cleveland team. You know, we have to be on television in two different networks in that market. And uh, we're going to do everything we can to promote and publicize. So uh, that is uh, just terrific. Uh, just terrific hey, hey, for hey, us. I the best high school wrestler in the country is one of two spots. It's either in Cleveland or Pittsburgh. You know, I'm a Pennsylvania guy. I sort of have bias towards Pennsylvania. And that's where my roots are. But, you know, we've got some great wrestling in that Cleveland area, and I have no doubt that, uh, you know, they'll do their part. They'll show up. Yeah, don't tell those kids in Illinois and Iowa that. They believe that the best wrestlers are in those two states. They have some great wrestlers in those <laughs> John Licata, always good to talk to you, brother. It's good to have you in the Nike hot seat. Today's interview brought to you in part by our friends at Takedown Sports, where coincidentally, out of Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Bud Hannibal and uh, uh, the, the bosses there, Randy and Dustin Kawa, made a positive decision to support this event and also the coming grapple at the Garden in New York City at Madison Square Garden a little bit later on this month. John, Doc, thanks for thank you before for, you before you leave me. Yeah. Uh, on the 14th, there's the Ohio duels at the Cleveland guys. The Ohio guys are sporting. On the 24th, Cleveland State, Ohio State at Cleveland State. Wrestlers and business will have a social there. On the 3rd, our NorCal chapter has Gable. And the next day, the, the emerging Southern California chapter also has Gable. And, hey, one last thing. Last year, we had a great event at the NCAAs. This year, we will have an unbelievable event at the NCAAs. So that will be on the Saturday after the, uh, be, before the, the finals. Beautiful. A lot going on with the network, Scott. Glad you're part of it. As always, my friend. Thanks for the time for all of us at Takedown. And again, our friends at Nike, we appreciate you watching this very special interview with the founder of the Wrestlers and Business Network. He's the man behind the scenes, John Licata. John, thanks, buddy. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate all you do. Thanks. <laughs>